Hi everyone. Uh, we'll be starting our session in a while. Please uh, join fast. I'll be starting this session. It will be a very uh, not a lot lengthy session. It's very uh, it's a short session. One hour or I will try to uh, make it within one hour because all the things, all the formulas are there in the code. So I will just explain how you can get those uh, results from the formulas that. Yeah, please join first. I'll be starting the session. Hi, sir. Uh, actually, uh, we have already got few plus. Uh, we're expecting more. See, wait for minutes, and I'll be starting the session. I hope uh, more will be joining in while we'll be explaining the. Uh, So uh, yeah, let us start the session. I think uh, we'll be joining in between and start the session. Here, uh, so as I was, I will be talking about uh, wind load. So in Indian code, we have IS 875 part 3 actually for Indian code, I think. Uh, my audio is clear, I think, all of you. So here we have uh, IS 875 Part 3, 2015, the latest version of the code. Previously, we have 1987 uh, of 2018, uh, sorry, IS 875 Part 3, 1987 version. But in the 1987 version, the process was completely based on different graphs. Okay. And the results, like to interpret the values or you can say to interpret the output from those graphs was quite, uh, you can say, quite clumsy and quite tough process to maybe uh, you may not get the accurate values. So, but in 2015 version of school, uh, they have they have given different uh, formulas, couple of formulas to solve the problem and which is very easy. For us because we just have to put the input there and those formulas will be getting the output. So let us jump into the uh, wind calculation process actually. If I go to page number 47, so page number 47, so this topic is actually the dynamic effect of wind, right? So uh, dynamic effect of Consider the dynamic effect of wind in a mathematical model. What we have, we have two process actually. One process, the main 
the most accurate process that we have that is the uh, let me write it here it is the most uh, accurate process is the wind tunnel analysis okay. wind tunnel analysis where uh, the company will be making a scaled uh, demo or you can say a scaled structure of the actual building using uh, different different uh, maybe fiber or something like that and that model scaled model will be kept inside the wind tunnel and the same uh, wind flow will be simulated there and from there using different sensors on the structure from different directions what is the wind force that will be calculated and it will be uh, given in the software okay uh, consider the forces in the, from different directions that is one process but it is a very costly process though because you need to uh, create the scaled model then uh, these wind tunnels every every company do not have this wind tunnel right so uh, specific companies are having this wind tunnel so we need to approach them that is also costly so this is one process or of the tall buildings wind tunnel analysis is uh, uh, taken another process that we have in our that is the gust factor approach. Okay. That is the gust factor approach. Now, what this gust factor is, you see, actually there are uh, there is a long explanation about wind gust and uh, this wind tunnel. If I, if, I, if I want to talk about the total uh, dynamic wind analysis, that huge topic need to consider or we need to uh, explain one by one every single uh, basic thing there but uh, in this session i am just focusing on calculating the gust factor rather explaining the, the theoretical aspect of gust and uh, what actually gust is so to get a basic idea of wind gust let us just show you what wind gust is if they write so we'll Show you the basic definition. So you can say a gust or wind gust is a brief increase in the speed of the wind, usually less than 20 seconds. Uh, it is of a more transient character than a squall, which lasts minutes and is followed by the dull or slackening in the wind speed. So, uh, if you if you sometimes we also guess this. Uh, the wind is flowing and uh, suddenly uh, suddenly in a, in a place or in front of suppose we have a obstacle and some uh, suddenly it increases the speed okay suppose uh, everywhere the wind speed is uh, quite quite similar but suddenly at, at some particular place where we have the obstacle is to increase the speed that is what wind gust is it and uh, there are different effects of the wind like uh, Induced to suppose you have a building like this. If I, if I draw the elevation and the wind is flowing like this, it obviously, if I draw the plan, if things are coming like this way, it will be going in this way, okay, and also it will be going from the above, okay. Now, some, some cases the winds will be going like this, and from the top also it will be going like this some cases it will consider or it will create some vortices here like this okay and another thing is the wind which is coming suppose i am designing the structure from of the wind which is coming from this direction that was y direction now this wind is called the along wind now along with this Along with this, there can be wind from this direction also, right? There can be wind from this direction also. So there will be a collision between the uh, winds from the directions. So actually, what we need to need to consider simultaneously both the uh, winds of from both the directions. So the wind from this direction, 
if we are considering y direction, then the wing from the x direction is called the across wing. Okay, so the effect of across wing and the effect of along wing should be considered simultaneously on the structure. Okay, so if I am designing the structure for along y direction wing, then along with this, you need to consider the forces of across wind also. Across, wind, across y means from the x direction. Same, if I am considering the forces of along x direction, then simultaneously I need to consider the forces across x, which is from y direction. Okay, so uh, these are different, these are the some basics. There are not many to read this and uh, I, I, it's probably IIT Kanpur, yeah, IIT Kanpur, I think they have published uh, some papers uh, regarding this. So you can see this and I strongly refer the webinars of uh, Structural Engineering Forum SEFI. I also refer to uh, these webinars, experienced engineers, they are huge experience. They have on different tall buildings in India and also in uh, Gulf countries. So they have huge experience, right? Uh, they, I have seen a few, few webinars and uh, there also you will get a complete explanation about the dynamic. So for today's topic, I will be explaining the process of calculating the gust factor that G which will convert this uh, this static uh, method dynamic approach, okay. So previously uh, we used to consider or we used to calculate the wind force uh, using this formula which is Cp minus Ci multiplied by A multiplied by Pd. So this was nothing but the pressure coefficient method, right? Pressure coefficient method. Right now, here if you see, we are uh, considering uh, this CS, the drag coefficient, just factor. Okay, this is more about force coefficient. Method. This is more about force coefficient. Okay, so uh, let us let us find out. First of all, we need to see what CF is, what AZ is, and what PD dash and uh, PD bar actually and G is okay. So up to this will not be an issue. This three. Okay. So if you see this FZ, obviously the, the design peak along along wind. Okay. We are considering we are calculating the along wind force first. So this is the along wind load on the building structure at any height Z. Okay. And uh, see here. See here the AZ is the uh, effective frontal area of the building. I will explain how you can calculate this. The PD is the design hourly mean and wind pressure, mean wind pressure corresponding to VZD and obtained as 0 0.6 VZ square. Okay, so uh, here actually previously the PD was VZ multiplied by KA into KD into KC, but here is, uh, is the VZ formula. Uh, PD formula which is 0.6 PZ square because previously uh, PZ, right? It was PZ previously. So, P, yes, it was PZ is equal to 0 0.6 VZ square. And now it is, uh, you can say, PD bar equal to 0 0.6 VZ square. Fine. So, uh, let us let us find out the PD and all. Here, if you want to find out the PD, so first of all we need this VZ. Now, what was the formula for VZ? The VZ was PB multiplied by K1 into K2 into K3 into K4. Right. So uh, we know this K1, K2, K3, K4. I'm not going to explain this this uh, values. If you see in the Code. This is the basic in calculation actually. So to see in the 
Just give me one second. So, uh, yeah, I was talking about the K1, K2 factors. Let me just open uh, K1, K2 values. Here you can see the K1 factor risk coefficient. K2 actually here for this calculation, not be considering this K2. Instead of this, we can calculate the K2 value using this formula here. Okay, we can consider this formula find out the k2 value and using this we can go for finding out the vz value which is vb into here this one k2 value. okay so uh, actually we can do that this is just uh, to see the z by z 0 i that means z is the total height of the structure and z 0 i that means at which level you want to find out the value of k2 okay this formula you can find out the k2 it is in uh, 6.4 uh, of page number 9, right? And another thing that we'll be uh, needing is the turbulence intensity. And here we have the formulas for turbulence. I will exp explain this in the Excel sheet. So, and uh, using this K1, K2, and K3 values, K3 is nothing but the topography factor. So, the topography uh, 6.3. And uh, for plain, plain areas where have slope less than 3 degrees, we can consider this theta or K3 value as 1. So as per, you can read this, so it will be very easy actually, everything is uh, clearly written. So, uh, K1, K2, K3 and, and lastly we have this K4 factor which is the cyclonic zone factor, okay. Uh, how important it is in terms of the cyclonic areas uh, or you can say cyclonic area, how important your structure is, depending on uh, the, I can say the use of the structure, the occupancy of the structure, that's not the important. Okay, so uh, we can find out the PD value, similar to this uh, PZ here, just the K2 calculation will be different here, because for every height we need to find out this K2, if you go with this table, you need to go for different linear uh, in most of the cases in linear interpolation, it is better to use this formula that getting this ready. So let us back to the formula. We have got the PD, it was in the page number 47, right? 5, 6. So uh, in this way, we will be finding out the PD value. Then uh, the effective frontal area, that means suppose this is my building and these are the levels of the building. And level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4. Now you want to find out the effective frontal area of level 3. So how it will be? It will be half of this column and half of this column. Okay, for this particular level. Okay. From if I go with a different color, so half of this level and half of the bottom level, and this is the effective frontal area for this particular level, which is level three. And for two, it will be half of the level between one and two, and half of the level between three and up to here. This is the effective frontal area for this level two. So uh, actually, what you can do, you can directly go with uh, the length and the uh, height of the structure. Now, if you have a similar height, obviously take half and half it thing. But uh, in different cases, suppose you have a, a height of the column, which is less than the upper one. So in that case, yeah. In upper. So then we have this uh, CF value. Okay. The most of the time will be taken by G perspective. Okay, so let us find out the CF. Find out the CF. What you need to uh, 
uh, you can you can hear here you can see we have a graph we have a graph right so this is the force coefficient for rectangular clad buildings in deform flow okay so here we have two graphs now uh, depending on the criteria that we have you can see when the h by b height by uh, the smaller width of the structure b means the width of the structure oh sorry the depth of the structure that means <laughs> sorry <coughs> so the b means the face uh, per, um, perpendicular to which the wind is coming okay so the h by b if it is greater than or equal 1 then using this graph <coughs> and uh, case of h by b less than 1 then we'll be using this graph to find out the c of that okay so uh, how to find out the values from this graph i will explain uh, while, while showing you the example positive example right so let us go to the example now uh, here we have got the excel sheet uh, Excel sheet you can use, you can actually create by yourself because uh, this Excel sheet is nothing but the formulas, just the formulas that we have in the all the formulas are uh, kept here and uh, some some uh, automation we have done just to make our job easy. Now it is totally depending on you whether you want to make those automation. If you go to Excel, you can click here. So I'm not going to show automation. Uh, even if you are not doing the automation, you can easily put the values from seeing that. Okay, so the first uh, here, uh, the basic wind speed. So, what I will consider, I will consider seven, sorry, five support, five meter per second. Now, uh, before going to that, let me just show you in the code that in which cases actually we need to consider the dynamic wind. Okay, so that is very important for going for calculation. We need the criteria where should apply this dynamic so if i go to the page number 45 here you can see the clause number uh, 9.1 and if you see this point a and b uh, it is saying in general the flow following guidelines may be used for examining the problems of wind induced oscillation okay it says the buildings and flow structures with a height minimum height to minimum lateral dimension remember this is the most important that we understand it is height by minimum lateral dimension of the uh, structure if the ratio is of more than about 5 if the h by suppose this is my structure and here i have a and b so here the minimum dimension is a right so is if h by a is greater than 5 or buildings and structures whose natural frequency in the first mode is less than 1. Okay, when you will be going for the modal analysis, you will be knowing the first, the natural frequency of the structure, right? So, if the first mode natural frequency is uh, less than 1 hertz, in that case, if, if any of this case is happening with your structure, then in that case, you need the dynamic effect of wind and i have already explained how the uh, process we consider one is the wind tunnel analysis and the other is the dust okay so it is saying any building or structure which satisfies either of the above two criteria shall be examined for dynamic effect of wind so let us check whether uh, we need this in our in our structure that is uh, etrs model that is the etrs model i have i used to consider this model the tall building I have. So here the lateral uh, dimension, the least lateral dimension I have uh, around 10.4. See, it is 10.379. So I'll just it as 10. And if I go to the height, let me go to the terrace floor, up to terrace floor. So here the height is 46.65. So if I the calculation, 46.65 divided by Ten point. So, what is the ratio we have got? It is 
46.65 divided by 10.4. The beta is not required in this structure, but I will show you. It is 4.48, so it is not greater than 1. Now, another criteria we have, let's uh, fundamental uh, frequency. So, let me just run the analysis. I set to run. Let me just turn off some of the loop cases, maybe the earthquake loops. The other wing loads that I have to define. That it will take less time to uh, finish. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, dead load and live load should be there because I done analysis. Needs. So let me click on run now. Even if it is not uh, required here, I will show you just for the example. Uh, but in in real case, uh, real scenario, you need to check whether it is required in your structure or not. If it is required, then then only you should do the dynamic effect. Otherwise, static method is uh, more as per the. Thank you everyone. Uh, really patient. Uh, okay, thanks. I'm just trying to actually. Uh, it is not possible to explain everything in uh, such sessions. So I try to uh, consider one topic because it take me uh, a lot of time to prepare for. And uh, actually, making a recorded video, it is quite different than uh, going for going live, right? Live, you don't have chance to uh, correct again. You are saying something, then it is the this is the end. And in recorded videos, we have time, like we can see and we can record again. We can combine everything. That is different, right? So I uh, able to conduct these sessions. This I have a tool, but I'm trying my best to uh, like that uh, session. So okay, let's see the model analysis now. So check table and analysis results, structure output. Here we have modal periods and frequency. So it says if the frequency for the first mode, if it is less than one. Okay, so obviously it is less than one here, point two, right? Uh, it is in cycles per second, that is what Hertz is, should be in Hertz, so same thing. So, 0.25 Hertz we are getting, obviously we should for the dynamic. Okay, so uh, here we have time period of 3.988. Uh, I guess something different. Okay, not an issue. Let me check here. Sorry. The time period we have got 0 0.98. One double. Okay, fine. So, uh, uh, what we have seen, we need actually this model is the uh, this model is the different model actually strength model. We should not check the time period CL. Just when uh, time period should be checked. In model where we do not consider the stiffness model. Then uh, uncracked model of stuff. One second. Okay. In one second. It is already analyzed, so let me check here. Remember, the model analysis should not be checked uh, here in the, the model where you have assigned the stiffness model. So uh, here I will check the value. You can see the time period is uh, quite different, 0.3, and it is 0.4. So here also we are getting less than one. Obviously, we should go for the dynamic effect. Okay, so the effect should be considered in the the model obviously where we 
designing. Here also you can consider what afterwards while designing you need to assign the stick body. So I will write somewhere uh, what is the fundamental time period that we have got. Fundamental time periods for first mode. Uh, we have got 0.367 and for the second mode we have got 2.205. Right. Now we need to check which one is for x direction and which one is for y direction. Okay, for that we will check this modal participating mass ratio. If you see the first mode, it is more into y direction. So 0.236. This is the period, right? Time period, it will be for y direction. Okay, it will be for y direction and uh, 0.205 time period it will be for here you can see the participation is more in the x direction so it will be for x direction fine so we have i have written this now i will open the file of the work, uh, service sorry strength model check the strength model now I will be assigning the load in the strength model actually. So, I guys, we don't have any. Okay, so let us go to the uh, Excel sheet. Here, uh, I need to put the basic values like the basic mean speed from the IS 875 map. This coefficient K1 factor I will be considering 1. Terrain category, let me consider as category 3. You can check what this category 3 is actually. This page and uh, tall buildings there will be. Uh, then we have the topography factor, I will be considering as one only. Importance factor, I will be considering as uh, suppose 1.15. Okay. And uh, design wind speed, so this VZ calculation here, it is not required because I will be doing it in table. Okay. Because this VZ value is depending on the K2 and K2 value is depending on the height of the structure. Right? Because if you see the calculation, see the uh, formula for K2, here there we have Z by Z, Zi. So Z is the total height by height of the door for which you want to find out the K2, or height of the structure for which you want to find out this K2. So it is depending on the height. Okay, okay. So that's why in that case uh, it will be variable height to height, different heights it will be variable. That's why you see. The K2 values are variable here and the VZ values are variable. Now, how to find out this PD? So we have written it here as a PZ actually. So, this PD bar, PD bar, if I go back to the flag, this PD bar 0 0.6 VZ square. Now, as we have got variable K, K2 values, so obviously. This PD or PZ values will be variable because this VZ values will be also variable height to height. Right. So, first of all, what you need to do, actually, I have already kept here. You need to put the story data, what is the height of your stories from items, and uh, it will automatically calculate the absolute height, the average height, okay, for different floors. And uh, here at the top, this yellows actually we have kept for the input. So height of the building, here rather considering the total height, I will consider up to this 46.65. Let me write it here. 46.65. And uh, here the BX, uh, as I am uh, finding out the X direction, obviously we need to, this values actually. So the BX means the uh, Dimension along x direction which is 10.4 and dimension along y direction it is uh, I think it is not the exact 123 it will be I let me see from here to here draw draw dimension line from here to here it is one so more two so you can consider as uh, 25 okay so let us Write it here. See, yeah, here we have 10 here. Okay, let us consider it as uh, 26 point something, right? Okay, maybe 
27.5 it is written actually this excel it was previously used let me keep it 26 let us just change this value so we have changed the height we have changed uh, the bx as we have considering the height of the lmr here also so yeah let us go to the lmr I go to the LMR level 51.651. Let us go with 51.651. The height depends actually up to which you want to calculate 51.65. BX is 10.4 and BY is 26. Okay. Now so these are the basic parameters we have kept here now why it is required i'll be explaining in a while while this uh, how we uh, will be using these values so now if you see here uh see here these values give me one second the total height of the building uh, we have kept okay now we have this equivalent aerodynamic roughness height. Now why it is required? We have uh, found out the CF value. Now let us uh, see how we found the find out the CF value. As we have kept the A and uh, B here, that is the BX and BY here. So we'll be getting a ratio of A by B. Okay, here you can see A by B and H by B just have to find out this a by b and h by b so here we are getting a by b as 0 0.4 and h by b as 1.99 this is for x direction remember okay so suppose you can see the drawing suppose this is my structure and the wind is coming from here this is b this is a in that case it will be a by b the different case if the wind is coming from here it will be b by a Okay, it will be b by a otherwise you can keep it a by b but you need to change the position of a it will be a then it will be b in case of the wind coming from this direction along b. okay so in two cases we need to find out one is a by b and b by a for two directions so here a by b is 0 0.4 and h by b is 1.99 now what is b the direction perpendicular to the wind along wind Okay, means the dimension of the building perpendicular to the along wing. So if I go to uh, uh, code, here if I go to the calculation of the drag coefficient, you can see here h by b have got 1.99. So this criteria it is fulfilling because here it is showing that if the h by p is greater than or equal 1, in that case we will be use this formula or this graph. Okay. Now a by b we have got 0 0.4. So if you consider 0 0.4, it will be something, some places around here, 0 0.4 a, a by b. Okay. Now the other thing we need to find out is the h by b. So we have got h by b 1.4. We have got h by b then see 1.99 so uh, almost close to 2 right so here we have got 1 here we have got 3 so let me just make it a bigger bit larger so 0 0.4 if i divide this 1 0 0.1 0 0.3 0 0.4 and 0 .4. So, and we have got h by b value as 1.99, which is almost equal to 2. So, here we have got 1, the line for 1. Here we have got the line for 2. So, if I draw another line in between like this, like this, we can consider this as 2. So, now, if I draw a line like this, straight line like this, here I have got the intersection. Okay, 
I draw a straight line from here, is somewhere here. So the value we can consider maybe one point. This is one point zero, one point one, one point. 1.3, 1.4, yeah, uh, something around 1.25, right? Something around 1.5 or 1.26, uh, something like that. Yeah. The CF value for x direction. We are finding out for this direction now. Okay, so let us let us see CF value can Excel sheet. We have got this CA value. So here we have considered 1.3 actually. Uh, let us change it so that uh, you get. So I made it as suppose 1.27. Okay, this is all uh, totally about your assumption, the graph, because we do not have any exact uh, values in the graph, right? So I have considered 1. Point. Uh, so now. The time period, fundamental time period, all the inputs I am showing here first. So fundamental time period for x direction we have got 2.205, right? For x direction we have got 0 0.05, okay? We have got 0 0.205 seconds for x direction. So it is 0 0.45 something. This is the fundamental frequency of the first, this, which we uh, we require. Okay, so we have given all the inputs. I think uh, last input we need to find this one. I will explain afterwards. Now let's let's see what are the things we left with. The CF we have found out. The PD value we have found out. The frontal area we'll be finding out here. See the frontal area. Here we have the height, the average height, and we have this width. So if the wind is coming from x direction, so we'll consider the average height and this width along y direction, just perpendicular to x direction, right? So then we will find out the fun, uh, frontal area of this area, this uh, flow. For this LMR, there will be nothing at the top. So it will be only half part. Okay. Accordingly, we have considered this actually uh, in the formula. Uh, now, forty-seven. In the gust factor. Now, if you see the gust factor, which is the main formula. So we have got this CFZ. We have got this VZ. Okay. Now we need this gust factor. Now, in gust factor, you will find different. Uh, different you can say uh, components okay one plus r r is nothing but the roughness factor which is twice the longitudinal turbulence in, uh, intensity you remember i have explained uh, uh, i have shown the the formulas for turbulence intensity in page number six i guess so it is in 6.5 clause page number six most probably so uh, below the K2 calculation. So here, roughness factor we can find out after finding out this IH, which is the turbulence intensity. After that, GV square, what is GV? It is the peak factor of upwind velocity fluctuation. Okay, now what this upwind, uh, upwind velocity fluctuation is, uh, uh, explain in a different session, uh, not here. So you can just see the values. Uh, how we can get this? It is 3.0 for category 1 and 2 terrains. It is depending on the terrain category. So, as we have considered terrain category 3, depending on this, we need to find out this one. So, if it is terrain category 3 and 4, the upwind velocity, or you can say the upwind velocity fluctuation, GV will be good. Value. Okay, so here is the GV value. Here we have got the GV value. You can see it is automatically 4. How? We have created a, a table here depending on the terrain categories and the GV. And it is connected to this. Like how we have made uh, this formula actually. If we consider the terrain category here 3 and 4, it will automatically inter incorporate this particular values and put it. 
Okay, now you can put it manually. It's totally up to you. And uh, this is just a simple uh, Excel formula that we have uh, used. You can see lookup formulas. So that is different thing. But in uh, real calculation, you do not need all this lookup and all. You can directly put by yourself by seeing the. Okay, so we have just reduced the input section uh, by making it uh, a bit automatic. So after that, go to the code. Our roughness factor, how we can find if you see here. This IZ calculation we have done. If you see, let me show you in the page number six. It is also depending on the height of the building. Page number six, if I show you. Sorry, page number nine it is, not six, 6.5. So here we have got the turbulence index. Okay, so for the terrain category one and for terrain category four, you need to find out z by z0, z by z0. Means total height by at what height you need to find out the intensity. Other than that, the terrain for terrain category 2 and 3, it is depending on this terrain category 1 value and terrain category 4 value. Okay, so it is iz1 plus 1 by 7 of iz4 minus iz1. So, if you want to find out for terrain category 2 and 3, you need to find out obviously terrain category 1 and 3. Okay, so 1 is uh, first terrain category plus 1 7th of IZ4 minus IZ1, difference between the uh, uh, turbulence intensity between uh, the category 4 and category 1. And for another one, this 7 third of 1 is 1, one seven, right? Another one is 7 third of uh, IZ4 minus IZ1. Okay, so uh, these calculations we have done here actually. The IZ1, uh, 2, 3, 4, different, depending on different terrain categories. And uh, if I want to find out the roughness factor, you can see this roughness factor is 0 0.2. So, how we have considered this 0 0.2 from here? From here, actually, we have considered this 0 0.2 roughness. Okay, and uh, this roughness factor, this is the Z0, sorry, not roughness factor. Uh, the roughness factor value is different. This is the equivalent, okay, this is the height, actually. Aerodynamic height, roughness height. Okay, and uh, this is the roughness factor, actually. Z0 value we do not need now. We need this roughness factor, R. So, R is 2 into IZI. So, if I consider category 4, so you can see this IZI value multiplied by 2. 0 0.183, we have considered category 3. So it, for this, this value, 0 0.18305, so you can see 0 0.18305 multiplied by 2. So we have found out the R roughness factor. Then uh, what we need? Find out the gust factor. I am talking about completely about the uh, along wind now. Okay, then I will be coming to uh, across wind. So after that we have this BS. Now what is this BS? It is background factor, including the measure of slowly varying component of fluctuating wind caused by the lower frequency wind variations. Okay, so uh, what is the formula to find out this? Every component has an uh, one formula. Okay, you just have to understand the components. That's it. Then you directly uh, put the formula, the inputs in the formula, and getting the. Uh, so for BS, it is 1 by 1 plus point, uh, root under 0 0.26 uh, multiplied by h minus s square plus 0 0.46 BSH square by LH. Now we need to find out these values. See, it is so complicated in terms of components. Every component has its own subcomponent. So, what is H and S, if you see here, H is the total height of the structure that we have considered and S is the level at which you want to find out the wind force. Suppose you want to find out the wind force at floor level 20. So, up to floor level 20, what is the height of the building? That is what you need to write it. So, total height minus height up to which you are, at which uh, height you want to find out the force. Okay. And uh, BSH, Square 
PSH is nothing but the average breadth of the building or structure between S and H. Okay, so uh, in in that case, to make it a bit simplified, what you can do, it is saying, suppose uh, uh, you want to find out the force at level twenty, and you have up to level twenty five. So, what is the average breadth of the building from level twenty to level twenty five? So, in our calculation in the Excel sheet, what we have done to make it a bit simplified, because maybe we will be getting a higher force for all the stories, but uh, make uh, making it a bit uh, uh, simplified so what we can do uh, we can consider like there are different maybe there are different width of the structure so we we have considered the highest width okay highest width and we have considered the highest breadth of the structure and that is what we are using as an average width okay so uh, in that case you can use this and if you want to make it a uh, different shape values like uh, if you want to find out from 20 to 25th, then you can uh, make it uh, in a separate way. That is also possible. Now, our sheet, uh, to make it a bit simplified, once we have uh, kept these values, and uh, these values only we are using as the average values. Okay. So, uh, now this is totally your approach. Different people have their different approaches. Yeah. But the code says that it should be between the four at which you are finding out the force, the top floor. What is the average breadth of it? Okay, so as we have considered, as already we have considered an average width, uh, considering the highest width. So uh, in that case, we do not have to uh, give variable values here. Okay, and uh, then we have LH is the measure of effective turbulence length scale at height H. Now this is also depending on the total height of the structure. And for this, we have two formulas. For category 1 and 3, 1 to 3 means uh, first, second and third category of terrain. In that case, it will be 85 multiplied by h by 10 power 0.25. And for category 4, it will be 70 multiplied by h by 10 power 0 0.5. So, all these things we have printed here. You see, G, V, L, H, the same formulas we have kept here. Uh, you, can, you can see the average breadth of the building. Instead of taking that, uh, the between S and H. If you want to take between S and H, then it should be here in the table as a variable value. Okay, this value should be variable at in actual case, but make it a bit simplifier, uh, sorry, simplified. So what we have done, we have considered one value only. Uh, if you see here, uh, where it is? Yeah, here, the breadth of the building, we have considered the highest uh, width that we have considered here, 26. Okay, uh, then, then, we, we have the BS, the background factor. We have calculated using this, this formula. We have got all the values, H, S, and uh, BH, BSH, and LH. So, considering all this, we can find out the BS. That's why we have used actually to make this calculations easier. Now, this BS values will be differentiate, uh, like variable values. Now, why variable? Because, because it is about different heights. This S will not be fixed. H minus S means this S will not be fixed. If you want to uh, find out for first floor, it will be maybe 3 meter. For second floor, this S will be maybe 6 meter. For third floor, it will be maybe 9 meter. So, that's why it will be a variable. So, we have kept it here, the table, and you can see this BS is a variable value depending on the height of the structure. Total height is uh, already there, 51.65. But depending on the story heights and uh, at what level you are finding out the value, uh, BS value, here we have found out this variable value. Maybe the difference will be very less, but still you need to find out for different stories. Okay, so after that, uh, so we have got the BS, we have got GV, we have got the roughness factor. Now, this, this uh, formula has one printing mistake actually. Uh, the printing mistake is here. It will not be g, it will be 5. Okay. This this 1 plus g square, it will be 1 plus 5 square from perspective. Okay. So, this 5, you see here, this 5 is here. Sorry. Factor to account for the second order turbulence intensity. Now, 
So this also we have the form which is GB we have got already. I H I that is the I Z Y turbulence intensity we have got already and that is depending on different heights. Root under B S we have got B S divided by 2. Okay. So is it B S or H S? Yeah, it is it is B S only. Yeah, it is BS only. So, for finding out the phi, we can use this formula. See here. We have got the phi. Now, this phi will be always uh, differentiate uh, variable because, because here we have BS variable. So, as in the formula of phi, we have BS. Obviously, phi value will, uh, will be also variable from uh, different height to height. So we have got phi, then what are the things we left? Here you can see HS. So uh, this this code is very useful. I said 75, 2015. Previously, all these formulas were not there, only the graphs were there. Finding out all the values from the graphs, that is also by assumption, it is very tough. So, as we have the formulas now, we can easily pre, uh, use uh, any uh, type of calculation method like the Excel sheet, MathCAD, whatever it is. So, you can do that once you make one sheet, then it is uh, there for you for lifetime, right? So, here we have got HS and the formula for HS is 1 plus S by H whole square. Now, uh, what is S? What is H? I have explained. H is the total height of the structure. S is the height of the structure at the level at which you want to find out the force. If it is the force for level level 3, that is float 3, maybe it will be 9 meters. If it is uh, level 20, it will be different. 20 multiplied by 30, 3 meter. If it is 3 meter uh, float, right, so it will be around 60 meters. Okay. So, again, this value will be also uh, variable because here this S is variable, right? So, you see in the Excel sheet, I'm just comparing how we have created the Excel sheet the, with the uh, code book so that you can also create this in such a way. Okay, so you can see this HS is variable 1 plus S by H whole square. Here H is the total height that we have got 56.65 and S if you if I click any table and you can see here C132. So if you see as I have considered this C132, C is nothing but here. The height of this particular floor which is 37.6. If I consider this, it will be C130. See, C130, this column, and 130 is the height of this floor. Right. So, how you can understand how we have created this. Uh, now, HS we have got. Now, what are the things we have? Last, we have GR, SC, and beta. Right, GR, SC, and beta. Let us see how what is uh, GR, C, and beta. So, S is the size reduction factor. For this, we need this formula, which is 1 plus 3.5 FA. FA is nothing but the fundamental frequency of the structure along this direction. Suppose you are finding out the, uh, uh, the, the force for x direction, then taking the time period of the uh, x direction only. You need to find out the frequency or from ETFs you can easily get. But for that you need to check that which mode is, uh, suppose your first mode is above, along y direction. So this, the first mode will not be your, uh, the first mode frequency will not consider for this, right? So the second mode is in y direction. So second mode is the fundamental first mode for x direction. Okay, if it is, if it is moving in the x direction. So that is you need to keep in mind. Uh, if you see my model analysis video, then you will understand it properly. So, this FA is the frequency. So, as we have considered, see, the Excel sheet, we have kept this time period along X direction. So, automatically, if I can, uh, calculate the FA, it, is, it will be 1 by time period, which is the frequency, 0.4. And it is same as uh, the ETL's result, 0.4 something it was, so 0.4. So we have got Tx, uh, Tx it is, it is not required for the calculation, we need this Fa frequency. So now Fa we have got, H is the total height, pH is nothing but the 
the uh, Vz that we have find found out, Pv into K1 into K2 into K3 into So if you see, as K2 is variable, this Pz value will be variable and obviously, obviously uh, this S value will be variable. So here actually we have not calculated S separately, we have just incorporated it in the uh, gas factor formula. So if you want, you can also write another column for S, another column for HS, something like that. But we have incorporated this in the gas factor formula directly. It's a long formula. So basically, as we have got uh, the formula, as these values are variable, these are values. So obviously, S value will be also variable height to Okay, remember? And what is this BH? Nothing but the average breadth of the building structure between 0 to x means the total height uh, throughout the section what is the average average width. So as I have explained, we have considered this as the highest uh, width of the structure. Now how is highest width means? It should be perpendicular to the wind direction. Okay, remember it should be perpendicular, the width perpendicular to the wind direction. Okay, so after that uh, the E is the spectrum of turbulence in the approaching wind stream. For that we have this formula pi n by 1 plus 70.8 n square. Now what is this n? Effective reduced frequency. Fa we have got. LH also we have got previously and Vz also we have got. So from this we can find out the n value and just put this n value here we will find out this E. Okay. So here this Vz value is variable. Right. And I don't know whether LH value is also variable or not. No, LH value is not variable, but the VZ value is, value is variable, height to height. Okay, remember, this is the main important thing. You need to keep it in mind that which values are variable height to height. If you uh, keep it uh, same for all the heights, then it will be different. You will get a wrong result, right? So that is the thing you need to keep it in mind that which results are variable. And uh, that should be uh, kept in one column, uh, and it should be like here we have did it, uh, we have done it directly in the gas factor. But uh, in your case, you can separate it, separate column. Okay. So uh, this way we will be finding out the E value also, right? So I think and beta. Lastly, lastly we need this beta is the damping coefficient for the building, and it is there in the table number thirty six, which is this. The page number 40. If you see the welded steel structure 0.01, voltage steel structure or RCC structure 0.02, free stress concrete structure 0.016. Pretty clear, pretty clear, right? So if you see in our Excel sheet also, we have created one place uh, for beta. Here you can see, and it is showing refer table number table for damping nearby. So here for us it will be 0 0.02 obviously and as I have selected 0 0.02 it is showing you this voltage steel structure all RC structure. Suppose I will be changing it 0 0.01 and it is welded steel. So it is just the Excel formula that we have. Okay. The Excel you can see uh, formula we have written here so that the user will understand if suppose I am giving this, uh, this uh, Excel sheet to someone else uh, to my students so they will understand okay so this value is for voltage steel structure and RCC structure. From where the comment is there from table number for uh, this one. You can see damping coefficient. Okay, so it is table number uh, 36 in page number 48. You can refer to this. So all the values we have got easily. GR. Here we have got GR. GR is nothing but 2 ln. Okay, uh, logarithm. 0 point exponential, exponential logarithm uh, 3600 multiplied by F frequency of the fundamental along this direction which direction we are considering the inputs, along the inputs. okay so we have got the GR formula also I show you the GR formula here you can see the GR formula GR peak factor for resonant this is the resonant factor actually so uh, we have got this GR in the previous old um, formula, in the old, the, the formula for this gas factor was uh, a bit different. Now it is it has changed. They have considered this resonance factor actually here, and it is more 
it is mostly taken from the new zealand port the australian port so if you go the process in the australian port also is the same and this i think it is more accurate so here they have got all the values all the uh, components for the gas vector now you put it in one place and you have the gas vector now obviously as we have different uh, parameters variable to uh, different heights so obviously the gas vector will be different for different heights that means different heights. okay the gas vector now cf we have kept same obviously so ultimately we will need to find out the force the force will be cf multiplied by the frontal area frontal area we have uh, considered as the this one average height if, uh, multiplied by multiplied by the uh, this one width for x direction it will be y for y direction it will be x okay and uh, then we have got the pd uh, sorry the pd pd is 0 0.3 0 0.6 vz square Okay, if I click on here, you can see. Okay, we have already find out this PZ actually, and uh, that is what the PD dash is. If I write here properly. This is what the PD dash in the. Okay, so and after that, so CF frontal area PD or PZ multiplied by gas vector. We have got the force along direction okay force along direction now we need to find out the across wind also we have got this force for along direction okay it will be applied in the x direction now simultaneously simultaneously we need to have, uh, assign another force from the perpendicular direction which is the across direction for fx uh, for x okay let me correct it here for I think uh, how yeah it will be x across not fx across okay x across that means it will be applied in the y direction in etx if I am using etx form okay so now how to find out this across wind so if you see here same all for all, all are formula based now okay there is nothing to worry about just two graphs we have first graph i have already explained cf now for this across wind also another uh, cfs we have drag coefficient for across wind so here you can see this is the formula to find out the across wind 3 mc by h square h we know total height of the building by z by h z we know at what height we to uh, find out the force and h is the total height of the building okay now the main thing is mc Let's find out this MC. MC is nothing but 0 0.5 GH PH PH square. Then we have uh, some variable uh, 1.06 minus 0 0.06 K. These variables we need to find out, right? Multiplied by root under pi CFS. This CFS we have different uh, chart or you can say different graph. Find out this CFS by beta. Beta also we know how to find out the beta. Mping for so let us see gh previously also we had gh here also we had gh same formula but here this fundamental frequency should be frequency of the across wind direction suppose suppose we have found out the x direction force so this is along now simultaneously we need to apply the across wind force here it will be considered as across wind now, while finding out the across wind force, here the G H, this F A should be finding uh, F A should be considered for this direction. Means uh, for y direction we had uh, fundamental frequency as 2.367, so F A will be 1 by 0.367. Okay, so if you see here, suppose in our y direction. I am considering this TA is 2.67 by direction. Okay. So if you go to the x direction, they have made the software like this that it will automatically take that frequency from the y direction pH. Otherwise, you can put it by yourself. For y direction, see, the x direction it was different. 
time period. Okay, so for the across wing, it should be the different uh, time period. Okay, time period for the other direction, for the y direction. Okay, so the obvious the frequency value will be different, and obviously the gr value will be different. I hope it is clear to all of you. Let me know if you have any doubt in that. Once you read it properly, this code, everything will be crystal clear to you. Okay. So then we have this pH, hourly mean wind pressure at height h in pa Pascal. Okay. And uh, we have this pH. I, I will show you how to find out. See here. The pH, here you can see hourly, if I write it here, 0 0.6 Vz square, obviously. Actually, this is the Vz only. Sorry, the uh, V son only, Vz. Sorry, this Pz only. Just to add, as it is, uh, as we are finding out for a crosswind, they have just changed the name as pH. Okay, otherwise it will be same. Uh, as we are considering all the same values. So, so then we have the B, breadth of the structure, normal to the wind. So now it is about a crosswind. So if you see here, in that case, this B value will be this one. Previously, previously, if this is the along wind, if you are considering B as this one, now for across wind, B will be this one, right? Because this is the phase where this wind will be acting. It is not as earthquake force. Okay, for earthquake force, if I want to find out the depth, it will be this one along the direction of the force. But for in case of wind. It is acting on the frontal area of the building. So obviously, it should be the perpendicular to the wind. Okay, so this is what B is. And H is the height of the structure. K. K is the mode shape power uh, exponent for the representation of the fundamental mode shape as represented by this one. Okay, this is the fundamental mode shape. But uh, we do not need this. We need this K. Now, for K, we uh, if you go in the next page, here you can see the typical values for mode shape power exponent k as follows uniform cantilever it is k is equal to 0 uh, 1.5 means if you are considering the structure as a uniform cantilever slender frame structure you can write the moment resisting if it is a moment resisting frame in that case the k value will be 0 0.5 building with central core and moment resisting facade okay means you have the core walls and uh, moment resisting facade means uh, Surrounding this poor wall, you have the columns and beams, the frame structure, the nickel, table as one. And for lattice towers, like open structures, like towers in this point three. Okay, so uh, for now, in our structure, though we have uh, several several uh, walls, but it is not a like would not have a specific wall, right? Not have a specific wall. So uh, though it is not a moment resisting frame, also still. Will be considering it as a slender frame structure. Why slender? Because the height to depth, sorry, the height to smaller width ratio is very high, more than five or near to five in our case, right? So you can see the tall building. Though this structure is not that much that much tall, but uh, the structures like 120 meters, 150 meters. So in that case, you can consider it as a slender frame structure or this one. Now, in case of structures with like 150 meter height, this there will be a uh, lift hook, but here uh, in our structure, we do not have a lift specific lift. So, for this, you can go with slender frame structure actually. So, I will consider this k value as 0 0.5. So, if you see here, k value I have considered as for the across wing, see where it is, uh, k value 0.5. Yeah, here you can see, just have to put it by yourself. Right? Okay, therefore 10.3.1 it is also written here. So I am just showing you why uh, you should write like this so that after maybe after five years also if you see this code, uh, if it's uh, this page, you can easily get from where you have uh, put this value, right? Because suppose you are not using this uh, dynamic several years and again suddenly you have got a project where you need. So if you open this uh, such Excel sheets and nothing is written here, so how to tell is you'll Get confused, right? So it is better to write the reference from the code that you can easily find out. Now CFS. 
Previously it was CF, now it is CFS. Same thing, drag coefficient, but for the across wind director. Now for this, we have a different, uh, let's see, uh, I'll show you. Yeah, here, different graphs. One graph is this one for CFS. Here you can see CFS. Another graph is this one. Now which one we should consider? Now it is depending on, it is depending on this gradient. Values of the crosswind force spectrum coefficient for square section building. If your structure is a square, kind of square, maybe, maybe somewhat rectangular shape, but most of the cases, suppose uh, uh, 4.5 meter by uh, 5 meter. So it is rectangular in shape, but the difference is very less. So in that case, you can go with this one. Only. And pretty rectangular structure like, like ours, maybe 3 meter by 6 meter. This is rectangular. Super rectangle, you can say. So, in that case, you can go this one. So, in our structure, obviously, we'll be going the rectangular structures, and most of the cases you will find rectangular structures on uh, square structures are very less nowadays due to uh, architectural aspects and maybe uh, different aspect uh, space management. So, if I go with like it is not rectangle, it is an irregular shape, but as a whole, see the overall shape is the rectangular shape, right? Overall dimension. So, in that case, now we have two graphs. One is this one, another one is the other one. Okay, now it is depending on which direction your wind is coming from. So for us, see, this the wind, the structure is oriented like this, and we are considering the force for this direction. This is the x direction that we have, right? So for this direction, sorry, uh, this is across wind, right? So in that case, it will be coming from this direction now. For x, across wind will be, will, will be coming from this direction. So it will be this shape. Right. So if you see here, don't get confused about the across wind and along wind. Okay, this is things. So in our case, this is the thing, right? For across wind. Across wind or x direction force. Okay. So here this is the thing. Now for this, for this, we have these two graphs. Now which one we should consider, whether the dotted one or whether the solid one. So for this, you have this criteria. Turbulence intensity. Okay. Turbulence intensity of 0 0.1 and turbulence intensity was 0 0.2. Maybe you get a value which is uh, greater than 0 0.12 or greater than but you have to understand or to uh, assume that which value is closer to this value or which value is closer to this. If the, so it is at 2 by 3 h height. The turbulence intensity I z i you need to find out at 2 by 3 h. Two third of total height of the building height. What is the turbulence intensity? And then you need to check whether it is closer to 0 0.2 or closer to 1.2. If it is closer to 1.2, you will be finding, you will be uh, choosing the solid line. If it is closer to 0 0.2, then you will be choosing the dotted. Okay. So if you see here, this uh, is especially uh, representing the structure, how structure is oriented actually. Okay. Uh, so let us, let us see here now. So, okay, sorry, uh, I think this is now the across wind direction, the actual wind direction, right? So, in our case, this is the structure. This is not the across wind direction, I guess. Uh, okay. No, this is the non, this is not the across wind direction. This is the actual wind direction. So, for our case, the wind is coming from this direction, right? So, actually, it will be, I guess, this one. Yeah, it will be this one. Correct me if I am wrong. Uh, maybe this one because here it is not show, saying uh, across wind direction. It is showing the wind direction, the actual wind direction. So in our case, the actual wind direction is perpendicular to the uh, longer direction of the wind. So across wind will be coming from. So obviously we will be considering this two, not the two. So now let us find out the turbulence intensity as two by three height. Okay. So let me see here. Uh, in the Excel sheet, here you can see 
turbulence intensities we have four different categories and uh, at 2 by 3 height the turbulence intensity now how to find out this 2 by 3 height turbulence intensity as we have calculated category 3 and you remember we had formulas we had formulas so using these formulas we have calculated this so for category 1 at 2 by 3 height we have this for category 4 we have this for category 3 we have this for category 2 we have this now as we have selected category 3 so it is incorporating the value of category 3 i guess where it is uh, category 3 0 0.16 so doing something i guess should be but let me see what category we have By three height in uh, terrain category have selected category three only. Three ones. Maybe the formula is okay. Sorry, let me see in the x direction. Maybe in the y direction we have done something mistake. See, correct it. See here. Three this. Yeah, here. So. For category 3, for category 3, it should be this one. Point. So, formula is lookup E6. Let me just check once. E6, okay, the category. And uh, F109, F109, F112. F one one F E one zero nine E one zero one zero okay 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 sorry sorry this uh I on some state category this is the category three, right? So, okay, I think this is the different value. Check once. Yeah, it should be this value, I guess. Category three, this value. Five seven. By three height, right? By three zero point six seven divided by three. Yeah, zero point six seven. So here actually, I think formula is uh, something wrong. Top E six. Let me see. Six. Yeah, six is category three only. We have that. Maybe somewhere we have done some mistake. E. Why it is taking the value of category one? Okay. Uh, I will correct this sheet actually. Uh, in your in your calculation, please uh, keep it in mind. It should be as we have considered category three. It should be this value, not this value. I think I need to check whether uh, where the formula is wrong. Here only. Yes. I think we have done something, some mistake here. We need to calculate. I need to check the formulas again for this calculation. Category. Just give me one second. Current category D. Seven. One. Right. So yeah, here uh, it is doing something wrong. I need to check. So obviously keep it in mind, 
uh, I will I will uh, correct it afterwards. So it should be this value here. Get confused. It should be this i z three value because we have considered category. Okay. So let me make it ten. Okay. So uh, just do uh, this for now. Uh, I am just showing you the process. So after that, the CFS. So uh, as we have got this i z three is but which one? This one, not this one. Okay. Uh, we should consider this value. So oh, this value will not be used in the calculation because this value for us will be seeing this value and from this will be uh, finding out the uh, value of CFS from the okay from the uh, graph. So it should be this one. Okay, that means uh, I Z three this one zero point two one. So uh, it is closer to 0 0.2, 0 0.21 for this closer to 0 0.2. So if I go to the code here, which, which line we'll be considering, we'll be considering this dotted line. Okay. So for this dotted line, now again same process. You see, we need this formula also. This value also v h by d. V h we know the hourly mean. Uh, this one by D into sorry VHD by FCV. Okay, so let us see how we have calculated this. You can see VHD by FC into so here you can see VHD is nothing but E100. What is E100? It is nothing but it's nothing but here you can see the design mean speed at height H. Okay, this the the hourly mean speed that we have found out found out. Okay. And uh, then we need FC. FC is nothing but this frequency for the across wind um, direction. And we have B. B is nothing but the, here you can see, if I click on here, where it is, uh, here you can see, it is nothing but E20. So obviously it is the breadth of the building along which the, uh, uh, perpendicular to which the force is acting. Okay, so E20, if I show you, E20 here you can see the y direction because I am finding out the force for across x direction. So along x, across x obviously it will be y. So this is the value I have considered E20. Okay, just to justify the formulas, the Excel sheet I am showing you what is the that uh, we have taken for that. Okay, so uh, so we have got this. Now this value we have got uh, 3.784. Okay. So let us uh, consider it as 3.7 or 3.8. So 3.784. Something maybe uh, zero, maybe one here, here, three here. 3.7. So close to four, somewhere here. Let me zoom it a bit. Easy to find out. So three point. So if it is three is here, sorry, three is here, and three point seven eight four somewhere here. Okay, and uh, uh, this is nothing but CFS and this line, right? So let us draw a line here, straight line, and you see this. Dotted line is intersected at this position. So let us draw a line on this. So you can see it is 0 0.001 and between 0 0.001 and 0 0.001. So we cannot, uh, now we need to consider it, uh, what it is. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe 0. Point, what we should consider? Maybe 0. Point, Double zero. What it should? Be. How much it should be? Uh, you can tell me. In between zero point double zero one and zero point double zero. Let us take an average value.
So maybe uh, 0.0015 like that. TFS value. Right? 0 0.0015 or uh, maybe 0 0.00 0.001 like that. Okay. Depending on at what position it is, just have to assume a value. Okay. So let us. Uh, I think here we have considered 0 0.001. Now let us consider it is a different value. Right. 0 0.001. So see this uh, this has no use in the calculation. So the calculation will not get uh, wrong result. But uh, actually this is for us so that we can directly refer this value and check in the. But it is showing some wrong value. Maybe some formula I have written or uh, uh, formula is written here wrong. So I'll check this one. Now we have got CFS and I have explained how we can find out the CFS k value we have got. Now what do we need? This MC value. So everything we have got CFS, beta already we know from the table number 36. Okay. Uh, GH, PH is the PZ directly from here. P and H, B is the already we know 26 and H is the total height of the structure. Okay. K we know 0 0.5. CFS we know already 0 0.0012. to Pi value 3.14 rate of saying and beta value. Okay. So from this will be finding out the across wind surface. And obviously it will be variable by height because there are some like VZ values are uh, variable to height, right? PZ values are variable to height. So obviously these values will be also variable. Fine. We have got this. I hope it is clear. Same in same way you can find out for the Y direction also. So I hope it is clear to all of you. How we can find out the along and across wind force. Now, this same force will be, these two forces will be acting together in one particular load file, load case file. Okay, so let me go to details. Let me uh, just take this file. Let me go to define load patterns. And here I have already defined actually two. Let me define another one, maybe dynamic. WX add new load. You can select the type as wind and user load. It should be user load, okay? Because I'll be assigning the user uh, load values, right? So add new load. Now you click on modify later. Here you can see diaphragm is given and different heights, and right? Now the along wind force should be tested here in the FX. And the across wind force should be pasted in the F. Okay, so let us copy this one from LMR. See here, actually, in our case, we have this girdle level. Okay, and this first flow level. So, what I will do, I will copy up the second flow first. The up second flow, I will copy. See. And I will paste here because uh, this is a quite typ uh, typical structure. So I'll paste here control V up to second floor. We have copied first floor and parking tree. Will this is parking tree is nothing but the uh, girder level. So I will copy this later on. Then uh, from here, see first floor and actually we need to combine these forces first floor and girder level. So, see, these two forces should be combined and applied in the first floor. First floor. Okay. So, 119 plus 1 foot. Okay. Let me write it here somewhere. 119.7 and 13.64. Foot. Foot. Okay. Uh, actually, you see the height is 3.85 and 0 0.6. Okay. So, should be combined here. The first floor it will be 119.77 plus in your case it, it may not be the same. I case it is switch 143.64. Okay, we have done 
and uh, now it is see you can easily understand whether it is correct or not okay so obviously it will get a higher force it is divided into okay uh, as it is a dynamic so and i will copy the rest the base we do not need up the parking so at up to this level we do not apply wing but still you can select here control so we have assigned the along wind forces simultaneously we need to assign the across wind force same way i will select up the second floor see i will do this how easy it is once you calculate just select the top one and paste up to second floor it is pasted now for this one same way i will calculate annually 29 point sorry 29.74 plus 34.69 right so let us see this two so let's copy this three at the first floor i will paste it here and for the first floor it will be a 29.74 plus uh 34.69 okay so this is the along way and this is the across way same way now when you will be finding out the along wind for y direction the across then the along wind force you will paste here in the fy and the across wind force you will paste in the fx is it clear to all of you i guess it is clear to all of you and if i click on okay okay so the dynamic wind x i have considered now i can run the analysis and i can see the effect means from both the directions the wind is acting on the structure and maybe like uh, in different way maybe you will say that at the top wind force will be higher at the, the mid wind force will be less no maybe at the end of the building or uh, mid of the building we will be finding higher wind force okay so it is totally uh, depending on the the, the criteria that you have depending on the perspective right so i think the calculation is almost this uh the axis sheet is totally correct except this one so this is not used in calculation uh, it is just to find out the cfs from the so i will correct this similar way you can do the same for y direction also so what the thing we need to keep in mind just the values the formulas that we have and which formulas are variable which components are variable there are so many components right so it is better to do step by step first you is it then you do next step like likewise you just try to create your own excel sheet it once you create this you got done like you can now directly go for calculation for a moment and structure so i have explained almost everything i guess though i have not explained uh, in in depth what is first what is turbulence in city because these things will take a lot of time so our uh, approach was to calculate the gas factor and how to put it uh, in ets now not only in ets you are using different software and if you have a uh, this you will have load case and apply the forces manually so you just have to apply the force in two directions along direction and in direction. right so okay let me see the behavior of the and any I will check dynamic x and this this one is up. Take a bit of time and see. I don't know whether it's uh, visible or not. Okay. And off the on and add the animation. Take a time.
<laughs> so whenever you are thinking, it will be more funny. <laughs> This con. Uh, I am not writing. Uh, I am not keeping it displacement along uh, x direction because it will be displacing maybe in both directions. So I am keeping it displacement result at y. So you can see the extent of force levels. Okay, these are the contours that it is showing. Here you can see, uh, obviously at the top it is the higher one. Uh, it is showing the displacement actually of the force. So, see if, if I can show you. Let, let me just see. Uh, I have from, from both the directions we have applied the force. Right? Both the directions we have applied the now uh, uh, for better understanding if you change the diaphragm rigid to semi rigid uh, find diaphragm let me change it to semi rigid now if I go to display the sides joints right it's, it should should show you in all the joints uh, of the structure they show you case of semi rigid diaphragm the forces used to act not in the uh, center of mass but all the joints that we have in right all the joints that the diaphragm is connected see Seven eight people are uh, constantly there in my live session. I'm really thankful, guys. Uh, it is a quite boring session because all the calculations are there, in and uh, but you guys are still there. That that's the spirit actually. If you want to learn something, have to like when it is boring. And like my age is very, I'm I can say I'm very young, but then uh, anyone of so. Uh, seems boring to me also sometimes, like uh, while preparing this, because that's why I have taken a so uh, a long time. I have uh, scheduled this is a sun, uh, Monday, I guess, and I have taken like one week or five days. Yeah, now you can see the display shape is quite different, right? Because here now it is not only acting on the center of mass, but in all the joints. So if I show you for dynamic right now you can see how it is acting. a very different way now. right so uh, actually in the semi rigid diaphragm you can see this local it is acting in right let's see here it's quite different. Okay. Uh, if I show you the sorry, see if it's showing 
display the size. Showing one diaphragm. Let's see. Okay, it's not showing it. Sorry, uh, it is not showing. It's showing in the uh, center of mass. Of okay, not an issue. So this is the process of calculating uh, dynamic. In force in gas factor approach can uh, create by the factor of either see you can do that uh, you can uh, you can reduce the factor this it is possible but uh, what we are considering we are considering the maximum okay we are considering the, because in 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 this yeah, you have seen that we are uh, assuming everything, right? CFS values, everything, uh, most of the cases we are assuming some value. So there might be some uh, corrections or maybe you can say, uh, maybe we are taking a less value, we are taking a value some. So in that case, uh, uh, there, uh, there is no need of uh, considering openings, how many openings are there. So in that case, if you want to consider openings and all, better way to with the uh, wind tunnel method because there you can consider it in a proper way because you'll be making a scaled model of the structure. All the openings and everything will be there, the facade that you signing off, everything, and then uh, sensors will be uh, attached to the structure every point, every point and the actual simulation of the wind will be uh, happening there. So then you will find the actual thing. This is one theoretical approach. Now if you make it more complicated, creating all openings and uh, taking percentage of things, all things then it will be uh, like clumsy in terms of mathematical calculation. Okay. So that's why we are not uh, like it is not needed to calculate all these things. But if you want to that and it is better and now nowadays there are different softwares like uh, Google has some Arwin software where you can do this uh, simulation of the uh, real wind uh, using in the software media itself digital uh, simulation of wind so can this wind tunnel the digital wind tunnel so yeah you can check that out uh, if you have Arwin, Arwin software or Need actually that amount of accuracy, or uh, then you can go with those softwares. But still, uh, in the major structural engineering projects, uh, most of the people are going with uh, internal analysis if you have budget. Otherwise, discuss that and just simplify it. Okay. And if you if you see the results of internal analysis and the analysis uh, the gas factor approach calculation, you have considered the values almost similar. Uh, almost accurate. So in that case, you will find that uh, the results are quite similar. Maybe a bit different, but the difference is not that much. Okay. And mostly, if you are considering Australian code uh, formulas from Australian, code, find that internal result and the result from the gas fed is almost the same. Okay. Now, this is totally depending on like here what we have done. Uh, rather considering the average. Uh, width of the structure from height to height, we have considered the total average width. So there, we have done some uh, shortcut for us, right? So obviously there will be difference in the results in that case. Maybe we will be getting a higher result. The internal you may get lower, result. but the difference will not be that much. Okay. So yeah, you can do that. It's totally your uh, approach. What is there? I have explained the process. You can even you do not need to see my uh, explanation also afterward. Uh, because I have I have told you all the things, whatever there is that if you open the code, if you refer those code uh, 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 clauses of the code, you can easily get it. Anyone can get it because this is just formula, input, output. That's it. So that's very easy. And I have seen, I have showed you how to apply it. Yeah. So this is it for today, I guess. Uh,
uh, I think it's almost uh, then yeah almost one and a half hours. So I will not expend it. Please do let me know if you guys have any any other queries or any other uh, requests for me so that I will try to make uh, such sessions for you uh, more than more. Because uh, I'm not like I used to think what on what topic I should make uh, videos. Everything is there in the YouTube. Right. So if I copy someone else, then it is not. If I am copying also. That should be uh, there. Should be something which is unique in my video. So I used to get confused uh, on on which topic I should uh, make videos. Please do let me know which topic I uh, I should make such videos and such live sessions in future. There are one topic I have thinking it like uh, hilly zones used to have buildings in steps, right? Like uh, maybe uh, at the top the building height is three meter, but at the bottom building height is uh, maybe ten meter. Okay, maybe they have increased the stories to put the uh, slope. So slope areas how kind of thinking to create one, uh, one video on this one live session on but that I need to do some research. I need to check my concept or whatever I have from internet. I am no. I don't know anything, right? I am also gathering from the this and telling you so that you guys can my side from one. Place. Okay. So I hope this learning process will be excited. Uh, I can learn so many things from you guys. You, can, you guys can learn from my video also. So if I made any mistake, please do let me know. In the I will try to correct it. Maybe it is not possible in this video, but I will try to correct myself. Uh, and I, I believe in Sukhupe community very learning the so thank you all of you for being there for the time and uh, really glad that uh, seven people have uh, you guys are amazing <laughs> I have got seven constantly so thank you again and whoever attended this session um, and thanks to all of you and if you are new to my channel subscribe this channel and uh, turn on the bell icon press this bell icon i'm not i'm not doing this i'm not just saying like press the bell icon i'm just practicing press the bell icon to get the notifications for my other videos schedule sessions and see you in the next week thank you